Good morning and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, one and all. Welcome to Culture and Christian Fellowship and to the people who are online in various parts of the country and even other countries, I understand. A very warm welcome to you this morning. We have some, some notices. Um, there's no coffee morning now on Monday. Okay. The prayer meeting is on. Um, there's a birthday, but we're waiting for the birthday girl to come. <laughs> just, just to say to you, um, we, we are going out online. You know this, people, it's not science. But I need just to say this to you, we're not going to be restricted because we're going out online if there's a prophetic word or the service changes. Yeah. That's what I want to say to you. We must allow, regardless of the circumstances, we must allow the moving of the Holy Spirit Amen. in our meetings. If, if the worship on the screen ends, it doesn't we've, means we've stopped worshipping. It means it's just stopped on the screen. All right. Because I can remember some years ago, um, we, we had a move of the Spirit in the church one morning. It was really wonderful. God was just moving among us. And, and the speaker was sat at the back and I, I, I just went to him and I said, it doesn't look like you're going to speak, brother. He said that. No problem with me, Jeff, you know. When the Spirit of God's moving, it was fine. All right. So I want to make that point that we are not geared or we are not fastened to a system. We're fastened to the Holy Spirit. He said, all right, okay. Um, yeah, all right. So, hey, let's, let's get on with the meeting. Glory to God. So, we're encouraged this morning. Bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by night and day in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Yes. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for that is pleasant. Amen. And that's what we do this morning. We sing praise and bless our Heavenly Father. Thank you.
a message in tongues and an interpretation I am with you do not be afraid trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight amen, amen. thank you very much well it's a great pleasure now to say welcome Alice <laughs> whose birthday is today expecting you on time. <laughs> <laughs> and the card is, and with so much love from everybody, of course, is, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfil his promises to her. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you so much. Very yes, of course. Is of it course. you preaching? I'm preaching now. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, thank you. About two. Three hours, okay. <laughs> um, sorry, Uncle Jeff, to hijack your sermon. <laughs> but I'm, um, I'm buzzing a little bit. I'm older oh, and I found oh, God. It's your birthday. It's my birthday today. Yeah, birthday girl, go for it. 29 and 20 years, years life experience, you know. <laughs> um, but I found God above all. Every time it's my birthday, I go back to 2018, when I didn't know, will I make it? I'm glory to God. I'm 49 and I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> I just yeah. praise God for that. Um, last Sunday when we're leaving, I said to Uncle Jeff, I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight on my knees. I'm going to, you know get praying even harder and he goes oh okay and as I was praying on Monday night that you know the armor of God is it mm -hmm. <laughs> Ephesians <laughs> sorry that was two. Ephesians is it six yeah, six, six. Sorry, neither Bible I've underlined it. I beg your pardon. Ephesians 6. I apologise. 
yeah, Ephesians 6 and um, verse 10, it's about the armour, because in my prayer I was like, it was clear, put on the armour of God, put on the armour of God. And in Ephesians 6, 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. In Africa, they don't have girdles for women who have babies. So grandma comes and gets a piece of cloth and really pulls in. She says, oh, you have to have your waist back, you know? So I, I imagine, you know, the truth right there, you feel it, you, you know? It's, you know, it doesn't move unless you, you loosen it. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of God, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which will, which will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. You know, if you're in war and your head is, you know, you're gone. But you have the helmet of salvation and who, who gives us that salvation is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Mm -hmm. always. And, and you know, I've, I've kept meditating on this all week. And on Thursday or Friday, I was watching TD Jakes, and he was he he was preaching on Daniel eleven thirty two. Those those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. That's the enemy. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great. Exploits. Mm. You've got to know your God. When you're down in the pits, when you're ill, when you can't get up, when you can't swallow, when you can't, you have to know your God. Mm. Not know about him as Uncle Jeff has preached or Nigel or, or Uncle Graham. No, know your God. You will be strong. Mm. You will get up and get that drink of water. Even if you crawl. You know your God, and then you will be strong, strong. in the power of His might mm. and do exploits. Yes. You will do exploits. Mm. No, matter, no matter what sort of troubles and nonsense and pain you're going through, if you know your God, you know him, not about him, not what the preacher has said, not about, you know him. A person, yeah, yeah? A person. Like we know our children, like we know our partners. When somebody comes and says, Jeff said that, you'll go, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I know Jeff, he would not say that. But I want us to know our God, mm. and then we'll be strong, mm -hmm. and then, We'll go out there and do exploits. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Bless you always. Thank you so Thank you. much. Don't tell me no. Yes, please. Can I build on that? Sorry, if you're going to speak, can you come forward? I've been thinking about the 
Ephesians 6. And when I got to the helmet of salvation, I thought, well, what does that mean? And I still didn't know until this morning. And the word I've connected with it now is protection. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as uh, Alice was speaking. And the protection came this morning when I was reading John 17. Um, because Jesus is praying for his disciples. So as disciples, those who are know our Lord, we are protected by this helmet of salvation. Mm. And it says in John 17, as Jesus prays for his disciples, verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So I know with the helmet of salvation now, I can apply John 17, I will be kept yes. from the evil one. Thank you. Amen. How I wished I'd prepare the message on Ephesians 6 now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alice. No, we, we know Alice, and if ever a lady has suffered with pain and struggle and trials, that, that lady has. So that, that's coming from experience. And uh, so it's wonderful that the, the choruses you picked, um, wonderful, and then. Alice says, I'm going to get praying. Mm -hmm. She said, okay. So Lord, oh, we, the, the word must have, um, have an effect, Lord, or else it, it's going to be a waste of time. Mm -hmm. It will be a waste of my time, my brother's time, and those who listen. And so my prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit will take whatever is of the Spirit and apply it by the Spirit into our hearts so we will go out changed from one degree of glory to another. Please help us, Lord. Help us. In many ways, I am weak, but it's you who makes us strong. It's the power of the Holy Spirit who encourages and builds us up through brothers and sisters. So, Lord, let us be built up this morning, we pray. Amen. 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 In Revelation chapter 2 and, and chapter 3, Jesus speaks to the seven churches in Asia. He knows each church intimately and has a specific message for each church. Five of the seven are told to repent. To all seven, he says this. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Can't oh, underestimate or overestimate which one is it. The value of being sure that we and you are hearing what the Spirit is saying. And one major way is through dreams and visions. God speaks to us. Um, Acts 2 verse 17 says this. In the last days. Now if you believe we're in the last days this is for us this morning. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. We're in there somewhere, yeah. Sorry? We're in there somewhere. <laughs> so you're all in there somewhere. <laughs> so I want to give you a vision today. And I'll tell you why. Vital, I believe, this is for you and for us as a church because Proverbs 29, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. That means churches are perishing today. Their people are in the church. They're listening to messages. They're praying, they're singing, but they have no vision. Personally, they don't have a vision. And they don't know it, but they're perishing. They're keeping the status quo. They're not advancing at all. Um, everyone who ever did anything for God had a vision. Everyone. Noah had a vision for the ark. It was 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. And um, a nautical engineer said, whoever designed that must have had advanced knowledge of shipbuilding for stability. <laughs> It was God. <laughs> Amen. 
Abraham had a vision. The Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Nehemiah had a vision to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Moses had a vision to go to the promised land. Dr. Bernardo had a vision for children who were destitute and, and poor. And by the time he died, there were 96 care homes with 60,000 children in. That's what a vision could do. Jesus had a vision on the cross. He had a vision for you and I to be saved. So, what can we learn from vision? Well, visions require faith. Visions are always future. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Nothing past or present is hoped for. For every vision becomes a statement of faith and we are to live by faith. Visions release spiritual power. You have to get up to achieve a vision. Faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. Also, it must be God's vision because unless the Lord builds, we labour in vain. No matter how good the idea is, if it's not from God, he will not own it. And with the vision comes the provision. One man said this, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. And it's the vision that keeps you going. When difficulties and problems arise, as they did for Ezra, Nehemiah, Moses, Abraham, the vision kept them going. I want to tell you tonight, today, you and I are not too old to change. Do you know that? Isn't that encouraging and comforting for most of the congregation this morning? As, yes, thank you. Because as we get older, we do get stuck. But, but it's all going to change everybody. A little yes will go a long way at the moment. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I'll tell you why. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15 says this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. I'm looking at a lot of fruit. We've got a church full of, well not full of, there's a few, we've got a church full of fruit bearers. Your most fruitful years are ahead. And for this church, the most fruitful years for this church, it says this, they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright, he, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. So this, this is good news this morning. So what is the vision? If you look up there, the vision's already there on the wall. Have a cup too. Bible says write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it for the revelation awaits an appointed time it speaks of the end and it will not prove false though it linger it's lingering at the moment wait for it it will certainly come and will not delay so the vision is from God and there it is for everybody to see 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 says this listen to this everybody when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, you all know it so well by now, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. God said he has chosen 
the temple for the vision. It was chosen and it was consecrated. Now there are five things about the temple that we need. I spoke on this a few weeks ago that we need to just look at and again. First of all, it was God's dwelling place. Somebody said it was God's portable home on earth. It's a place for his name. It was a place of sacrifice. Only priests could minister. It was a place of intercession and prayer. And the main purpose for the tabernacle was to get a man into the presence of God to pray, to intercede on behalf of the people. Now, I want to tell you this is exciting this morning. Do you know what happened at the dedication of that temple? Fire fell from heaven. At the dedication of the temple, fire came down from heaven. Now we know the true temple is not a building. For Jesus is the true temple. He fulfills everything the temple was meant to be. John 2 verse 19. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Of course he was speaking about it in his body. He is the dwelling place of God. Colossians 2 verse 9. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. God's name was in him. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he was the sacrifice. Matthew 20 verse 28 speaking of himself. He said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And he is our High Priest. Hebrews 10 verse 21. We have a great High Priest over the house of God. Do you know what Jesus' ministry is at the moment? He bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He is at the right hand of God. This is wonderful this morning. Romans 8 verse 34. Jesus is at the right hand of God, interceding, praying for us. Amen. How marvellous. If you wanted somebody to pray for you, who better could you have than Jesus? <laughs> Seated at the right hand of God, praying for John and Catherine, and Harold and Bill and Mary and Tom, when they come. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the, pur the purpose of Jesus' life was to go back into the presence of God, having provided forgiveness and salvation for you and I, and to pray for us. So we know Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body. Now, can the head and body be separated and still be a person? No, it's not difficult. So, Jesus is the head of the church. He's, he is praying. What should the body be doing? Try praying. I'll give you a little clue. Yes! Yes, everybody, yes! This is the message for the church today. This is the message for the church in England. This is the message for the church throughout the world. I'm not a world preacher, but I know what the message is at the moment. And to help us, God made us to be like Jesus. Remember the temple? Guess what you are. Thank you, sister. 10, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? There is a holy of holies inside of you. This, you're very special, everybody. Look, turn to the person next to you and say you're very special. Thank you. Thank you. You're very special because your body is special because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that brooded over the waters of creation is in you this morning. It's wonderful. We are the dwelling place of God. It gets better. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the Holy Spirit in you and you have the Spirit of Christ in you. 
And God has put his name in us. We're Christians. We're Christ ones. We are people like Jesus. One man said to somebody, what's a Christian really like? And the other man replied, come and stay with me for a fortnight. Could you and I say that? Come and stay with me for a fortnight. And you because they should be able to find out what Jesus was like if they spent a week with us. We offer sacrifices. We fulfil it completely. Romans 12 verse 1. To offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. And we've been ordained as priests. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God. So th this, th this is what we've got to grasp this morning and for this week and the month and the days ahead. The temple was a house of prayer. Jesus was and still is a house of prayer. So God's purpose for saving you, dwelling in you, making you a temple and a priest, so that, that you could become a house of prayer. Amen. Amen indeed. Now, remember at the dedication of the temple, fire fell from heaven. Anybody interested in the fire of heaven this morning? <laughs> Anybody interested? Fire fell from heaven. Now, a couple of weeks ago, just before Nigel spoke, I, I, I spoke about the stars. The only reason that they have any value, of any purpose whatsoever, is because they are ablaze. They're burning on fire. Now, the Bible says that Jesus is the bright morning star. But guess what the Bible says about you? Philippians 2, verse 2, verse 2. To do everything without verse 14, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, which you shine like stars in the universe. You're shining this morning like stars in the universe. When you look up at night and there's a clear sky and you see all those stars, it's it's black. God looks down and sees it's all black and sees all the stars shining. In fact, in this room this morning, there's a cluster of stars. Three. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> yes. This is really so, so, so very important for us as a people. For the vision. For the vision. So you're not an apostle. Okay? You're not a prophet. You're not an evangelist. You're not a teacher, you're not a pastor, you're not a treasurer, a secretary, a deacon, a deaconess, or a worship leader. But you now have a vision. You now have a vision. You know why God chose you. You know why you're, why you're in this church. He has given you a vision. And this is the vision for you this morning. To be what Jesus died to make you. A house of prayer on fire for God. Amen. That's your vision. That's your vision. You will never get a better vision than, be, than being a house of prayer and on fire for God. Remember visions come from God. They keep you going. They require change. So what changes can you bring into your life so that you will become a house of prayer. Could you get up a bit earlier? Silence all over the congregation. Yes. What I'm, I'm really trying to say to us, we have a vision in this church and it's a vision for revival. It's a vision for 2 Chronicles 7, but it will only be completed by the body doing its work. Every single person in the church who wants Jesus and Saviour as Lord doing their part in it. Becoming a house of prayer. Wanting to be on fire for God. You know, the, the days are short, aren't they? Liz put out a piece of paper about making the most of the day carpe diem. But that's what we've got to do now. Truly, we, we, we've got to do it. You see, visions require change. 
To, for you to become a house of prayer and on fire, you have got to make changes in your life. Prayer has got to become more important than the telly. Prayer has got to become more important than this or that or the other. There's got to be more room for prayer in your life. Husband and wife, you've got to take time together to pray. You've got to build up a prayer base in the home. Even more than you're doing now. These are, I need to tell you, these are desperate times. What's going on? Not just the coronavirus, but what's happening with Christians. You know, some, in Scotland talking about uh, um, finding people who carry a Bible. These are desperate times. That's why prayer is needed. That's why I'm kind of... I hope I'm loving you. I hope I'm loving you, bringing it home to you. Home to you. Because what God asks you to do, He gives you the ability to do it. He doesn't leave you. He will... What a thrill for God if, if you doubled your prayer time. And, and because you want to spend more time with God who loves you and sent His Son to die for you. What a wonderful thing. So you need to set goals. You need to go home from here and do something different. Amen. I need to tell you I will. Alright? I'm not telling you what. But I do intend to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not wasting the next 15 years of my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh Lord. And do you know what happens then? If you will own this, if you will do more than you're doing now, I'm sorry to press it, but what God gives me, I give. You know, and you, you've got to love me because I can show you from the Bible. <laughs> Together, we become a bonfire. Yeah. Yeah. Together, when we come together for prayer on a Thursday or when we come together on a Sunday, there's a bonfire in here. And I'll tell you what happens, it's even better. Do you know what the fire does? It burns up the wood and the hay and the stubble in your life. How many of you need wood, hay and stubble being burnt up in your life? I'll tell you, let's get it burnt up before the day of judgment. Because it will be too late then. We've now got the opportunity We've now got the opportunity of God to burn up the wood and the hay and the stubble in our lives. And we must take it. We must take it. What would be the result if we do that? 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. God will heal the land. <laughs> See, the answer, the answer is not the politicians. And, you know, I'm not political. I, don't, I haven't got a clue what's going on. But I know the answer is always with the church. If my people. And we become the royal prayer force. We become the royal prayer force. Hallelujah, everybody. Listen, I'm kind of pleading with you almost. Do it for your brothers and sisters. If you won't. Don't feel you can do, do it for your brothers and sisters so that they can see their children saved, their husbands saved, their grandchildren saved. How long we've got left, I don't know. I don't know about end time stuff. What I do know is this John Wesley said, God set me on fire and people came to watch me burn. Do you know what happened when he, when he started burning? His prayer life increased. <laughs> he would spend two hours in the morning in prayer and reading the word. That's my message for you this morning. What you do with it is your responsibility. I, I, I have tried to speak to you in love. Discharge my responsibility. I want to see your family saved. When you say, Tommy got saved yesterday, there'll be a shout of hallelujah, go up through this church, with the angels all cheering and us cheering for your Tommy, or Bill or Mary. Do it for one another, brothers and sisters. Make, 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 make a bigger effort now. Make a bigger effort for one another.
and God will heal and God will move and God will move and live stream will never be the same again there'll be that many interruptions the speaker won't get a chance to speak why? because there'll be fire over there with revelation there'll be somebody over there that's getting healed please don't think it can't happen because it's happened in this church before some of us are old enough to remember it was a while ago <laughs> let me pray I've said enough I've said enough Father I left my hands to you this morning we need the fire Lord yes. send the fire yes. send the fire to burn up every trace of sin to bring the light and glory in the revolution now begin send the fire today and while we've got our eyes closed, while we're still, if you want to just dedicate yourself afresh to God, if you just want to set yourself apart, remember when the temple was dedicated, the fire fell. If you just want to take a moment, and I won't take long with this, to dedicate yourself to God afresh and anew, and say, Lord, send the fire. Here I am, wholly available. As for me, I will serve the Lord. Let's just take a moment with this. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the response, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the response, Lord. Those who are standing, Lord, just... Just, just touch their lives where they are now. Where they are now, Lord. Touch them with, with, with your fire, burning up, burning up every trace of sin. Letting the light and the glory come in. Lord, Lord, use these people. Those who are sitting and standing inside. Who are standing inside, Lord. Minister deeply into their lives. Wake them up in the night to pray. Wake them up, Lord, to speak. Wake them up to call on the name of the Lord. Speak deeply into the lives of, of each one of us, Father. We want to say to you individually and as a church, here we are wholly available for the vision that you have given to us. Because when the vision is being fulfilled, you'll be receiving so much glory, so much praise and so much honour and we will be glad and rejoice in that. Lord, I offer my life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory thank you Lord thank you Jesus and everybody said Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. God bless you